Good morning, class. My name is Mr. Martinez, and today we're going to be going over this teak. The student is expected to use a method of completing the square. Now, first of all, what does it mean to complete the square? Well, if you're given a binomial, namely x squared plus bx, then by adding this number, b halves squared, you can make a perfect square. You'll have x squared plus bx plus b halves squared. That'll be equal to x plus b halves squared. It'll be equal to this, a perfect square. Now, why is it important to know how to complete the square? Well, it can be used as a method for solving quadratic equations. It's especially useful when factoring out the equation is either very difficult or very, very difficult. It can also be used to change the equations for circles and parabolas into standard form. Oftentimes, you'll be given the equations for, this conic, for these conic sections in such a way that you don't really have much of an idea as to how to graph it out or some of the properties for these graphs. In the case of a parabola, changing the equation to standard form will give you its vertex. In the case for circles, changing it to standard form will give you the center of the circle as well as its radius. Now, let's go on to some, let's go on to some examples of completing the square. What number needs to be added to the following expressions to make them perfect squares? Let's look at the first one, a x squared plus 10x. What number can we add to this expression to make it a perfect square? Yes? Yes. We need to look at the coefficient of x. When we can divide the coefficient of x by 2, that will give us 5. And when you square this, you will get 25. And by adding 25 to this expression, you will get x squared plus 10x plus 25 which is going to be equal to x plus 5 squared, a perfect square. Now let's go on to the next example. Let's look at b. We'll have x squared minus 5x. Now what number are we going to want to look at to get a perfect square? Well, let's check out the coefficient for x, negative 5. When you divide the coefficient of, f, of x by 2, you're going to get negative 5 halves. And when you square that, you will get 25 fourths. And when you add this number to your expression, you will get x squared minus 5x plus 25 fourths, which is going to be equal to, to x minus 5 halves squared, another perfect square. Now let's look at the next example. Let's look at c. x squared plus 2 thirds x. Now the coefficient for x here is 2 thirds. When we divide 2 thirds by 2, we will get 1 third. When we, when we square this, we will get 1 ninth. And when we add this number to our expression, we will get x squared minus 2, not one, excuse me class, x squared plus 2 thirds x plus 1 ninth, which is also going to be a perfect square, x plus 1 third squared. Now that we've seen a few examples of completing the square, and now that we have sort of an idea of how to do this. Let's look at some examples of how we could use this method to solve quadratic equations. Now let's look at our first example. Let's look at A. We have here the quadratic equation x squared minus 6x plus 8 equal to 0. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to subtract 8 from both sides of this equation. That will give you x squared minus 6x is equal to negative 8. Now here we have a binomial, right? Now what number can we add to this binomial to get a perfect square? Well, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, you're going to, want to look at your coefficient for x, negative 6. You're going to want to divide that by 2, that would be negative 3, and then square that, which will be 9. And then you can add 9 to x squared minus 6x to get a perfect square, namely x minus 3 squared. 
However, you can't just add a number to this side of the, equa of the equation without also adding it to this side. So we're going, we're going to want to add 9 also to this side of the equation. So we're going to have negative 8 plus 9, which is going to be equal to 1. And this is going to be your, equa your resulting equation. X, squ x minus 3 squared equal to 1. Now to solve for x, you're going to want to take the square root of both sides of the equation. So you'll have the square root of x minus 3 squared equal to plus or minus the square root of 1. And this equation will be equivalent to this one. x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus 1. So then to solve for x, it's simply a matter of adding 3 to both sides of the equation. So you'll have x is equal to 3 plus or minus 1. So your two solutions for x will be x is equal to 3 plus 1, which is going to be 4, and 3 minus 1, which will be 2. And thus concludes our first example. Now let's look at another example of a quadratic equation being solved using completing the square. Here we'll have 9x squared minus 6x minus 4. Notice how in this example, our, our coefficient for x squared is not 1. So the first thing you're going to want to do to get rid of this coefficient to make it a 1 is you're going to want to, you're going to, want to divide both sides of this equation by 9. Doing so will give you x squared minus 2 thirds x minus 4 ninths equal to 0. This equation is equivalent to this one. So like before, we're going to want to move this term to the other side of the equation. So we're going to add Four. We're going to add 4 ninths to both sides, and that will give us x squared minus 2 thirds x is equal to 4 ninths. In this example, our coefficient for x will be negative 2 thirds, and when we divide that coefficient by 2, we will get negative 1 third. And when we square this, we will have 1 ninths. So we'll add this number to, this, to both sides of our equation. So that we'll get x squared minus 2 thirds x plus 1 ninth is equal to 4 ninths plus 1 ninth, which is going to be equal to 5 ninths. Now, this is a perfect squared. So this is going to be equal to x minus 1 third squared is equal to 5 ninths. So now to solve for x, you're going to want to take the square root of both sides of this equation and that will give you the square root of x minus one-third squared is equal to plus or minus the square root of five-ninths. And this equation will be equivalent to this one. x minus one-third is equal to plus or minus the square root of five divided by three. So our two solutions are going to be x is equal to one-third plus or minus the square root of five divided by three. Now let's look on to our next example. Here we're going to have 2x squared minus 4x plus 12. Now like before, we have a coefficient of x squared that is not equal to 1. So to make that a 1, we're going to want to divide both sides of our equation by 2. When doing so, we will get this equivalent equation we'll have x squared minus 2x plus 6 is equal to 0. Like before, we're going to want to subtract this number from both sides of our equation. So we're going to have minus 6 minus 6. That will give us x squared minus 2x is equal to negative 6. And like before, we're going to want to get a number such that when we add it to this side of the equation, we will get a perfect square. And to get that number, you're going to want to look at negative 2. When you divide negative 2 by 2, you'll get negative 1. And when you square that, you will get 1. And by adding this number to this side of the equation, you will get a perfect square, x minus 1 squared. And of course, in order, in order so that the equation remains balanced, you're also going to want to add that 1 to the other side of the equation. So you're going to have x squared minus 2x plus 1 is equal to negative 6 plus 1, which will be equal to negative 5. And the equation that will be equivalent to this one will be x minus 1 squared is equal to negative 5. Now to solve for x, you're going to want to 
find the square root of both sides of the equation. So you're going to have the square root of x minus 1 squared is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 5. And this, and this equation shall be equivalent to this one. And so you'll have x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus i times the square root of 5. And so to solve for x, it's now simply a matter of adding 1 to both sides of the equation. So we'll have x is equal to 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 5. And there are your solutions. And this concludes our lesson for today. Thank you for joining me, class, and I hope you were able to learn how to complete the square. So long.